Good afternoon. Congrats on being named captain. Thank you. I appreciate that. What does that mean to you? Uh, it means a lot, you know, to uh, be selected as the captain, um, to be honored by my teammates, uh, you know, it means a lot. Uh, it's something we all strive for, and, um, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, them voting me as captain. When it comes to Sunday's game, what is the best way to make sure that you start strong? Because Pete said week one's always a challenge. Yeah, uh, just coming out fast, you know, having a lot of enthusiasm, uh, enthusiasm uh, great energy, you know, coming out fast and executing. You know, keeping things simple, um, not not making it you know too much. Uh, just going out there and doing your job, and uh, you know, getting the ball in play. When was the last time you were a team captain? Uh, the last time, shoot, man, uh, college, in college. college. Yeah, yeah, you guys in college. We asked you this last week, I guess, when Jackson came back, but kind of seeing him progress the, the, with another week and, you know, that he's going to play Sunday, just kind of, I guess, what are your thoughts on kind of having seen Jackson make this recovery? Yeah, uh, Jackson is uh, extremely tough, man. I think he's, uh, he's, he's proven a lot, you know, to a lot of people um, with just the way that he's coming back from, um, you know, a significant injury. And uh, he's looked, you know, really good in practice. Um, you know, I, I can't speculate on uh, what's going to happen, but, you know, from my vantage point, I think he's done a phenomenal job and I think he'll continue to progress and get better. You first heard the Geno chant two years ago against the Rams after you led that 98-yard touchdown drive. What, you, what was your reaction to that then? And what do you think about it now? I mean, when you got against the, the Broncos last year when you're facing Russell and, and going forward as well. Yeah, uh, I think um, it's very endearing to me. Just, uh, you know, in that moment, obviously, you know, it's kind of funny when you're in the game. Uh, it, you know, it sounds cliche, but you can't really hear the noise. Um, you know, you kind of just tune into the game and you kind of block everything else out. But uh, when I got home, you know, I, I saw the videos and uh, it it, all, it made me feel great. You know, honestly, it did. Um, it was pretty cool, a special moment. And uh, I really appreciate the fans for that. Um, you know, looking back on it and to see where we are now, um, you know, I think it's kind of like a storybook, you know, when you think about it. Um, and that's why I think this place is so special. That's why I enjoy being amongst the fans. And uh, every game that we play at Lumen Field is, uh, is, is just a, a special moment. So we're looking forward to Sunday and uh, seeing the fans out there. So you didn't realize it in the moment? You didn't hear it? I mean, it's hard for me to, you know, think about stuff like that. But I really didn't. You know, I was, I was like so zoned in in the game um, that I really didn't hear it until I got home. You know, you can hear a few chants, but it, it, it didn't seem like it was like the entire stadium. Uh, when I got home and you saw all the videos and stuff like that, it really made it, you know, what it was, man. It was like the entire fan base was, you know, you know, chanting my name. And so uh, that's cool and stuff. I mean, I'm not, you know, over egotistical about things like that, but it was a special moment uh, back then. Is it a little challenging preparing for a defense with the turnover they've had, the amount of turnover they've had in week one, so you don't really have tape of this group together? Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be a challenge. Uh, week one, um, you know, you watch a bunch of tape of what they do on film, and, I mean, they can come out and do just about anything. And so, uh, you know, for us, we got to stay on our fundamentals and our rules. And, uh, you know, there is a bunch of different players out there, but um, number 99 is still going to be out there. Uh, and, and they have uh, the same D coordinator from last year, same head coach. And so um, there will be differences, but a lot of similarities. And so for us as, a, as an offense, you know, we're going to go out there expecting everything uh, and, and just go out there and play our game, uh, you know, treat it just like training camp. You know, you got to go out there and read what the defense gives you and take what they give you. And so that's, that's really what my focus has been, um, you know, as we prepare for the Rams. They still have Aaron Donald, as you mentioned, but Jalen Ramsey is now not there, and they were using him at that star position, he played all over the place. So, how much more difficult does that make that looking at their secondary, wondering what kind of schemes got their stuff they're going to do without a chess piece like that they could do? All yeah, um, you know when you when you look at it, when you watch film, uh, when you break down a defense and a D coordinator, uh, you just go back to what they've always done. Uh, you got to prepare for what what you've seen on film. Um, they have a bunch of different guys who can can fill that role, and uh, you know we have an idea of who will, but they can always put someone else out there. And so uh, when I'm looking at film, uh, you know obviously we we got preseason tape on them and, and things from last year. Uh, you kind of just prepare for for what you've seen, and then expect anything. You know they could call any defense they want, uh, put anybody in any position, and uh, it's our job to you know counter that. And so. Um, I'm just preparing for everything, and, and if they give us what, uh, what we've seen on tape, then we'll be ready for it. And if it's something different and we have to adjust, then we will. What's, what's been the most encouraging part of training camp that gives you confidence about the offense heading into the season? I think um, the most important, I mean, the most um, 
you know, great part of training camp that I've seen is all the explosives. Um, you know, we, we have made a ton of plays down the field and uh, we, we got a ton of explosives on tape and uh, who knows what, what it'll be like during the season. But we got so many playmakers, so many dynamic players who can do a bunch of different things. And so uh, the key for me is to get the ball into their hands, let them make the plays, uh, you know, trust what I'm seeing. But, um, you know, from what I've seen in training camp, uh, you know, we, we have a pretty good offense, but we still got to go out there and prove it. And uh, nothing we did in training camp is going to help us. So we got to go out there and prove who, who we think we are once we get out there on Sunday. What are your expectations for you and your team for this season? Uh, high expectations, very high expectations. Um, you know, I think I think the world of my teammates, I think the world of my coaches. Uh, I believe we have uh, a tremendous opportunity this season uh, with the players that we have and the coaches that we have. And so, um, I expect to go out there and play well. And uh, obviously, like I said, we got to prove it. Uh, it's not going to be given to us. Um, and, and that's what I'm looking forward to is, is the opportunity to prove myself again. You know, if you allowed yourself a, a moment whether it was during the off season or maybe even last weekend when you had a break, to think about sort of the questions that were surrounding you last year at this time versus the sort of confidence everyone has in you going into this season to the point where you were named a team captain this week? Uh, I haven't really thought about it, no. Um, I'm so focused on the day-to-day -day stuff and staying stuck in the moment. But, um, you know, I do believe that even last year, um, you know, the team and the coaches and the guys around me had confidence in me. Um, I think they've all said that. And, you know, this year being voted the captain, I don't think it changes that um, or enhances it. You know, I think things are pretty much the same. And uh, for us, man, it's about the daily walk and, and how we can go to work every day and get better. And uh, that's really all I focus on. Um, but I know the guys around me, they trust me and I got to earn that trust. You know, it's something I got to continue to earn every single day. And uh, that, that's something I'm focused on. You set statistical goals for yourself over the course of the season? I do not. When you have chemistry with a pass catcher at any position, uh, in what ways does that manifest itself on the field? Yeah, it, uh, it, it just becomes like things are second nature. Uh, you can tell, you can read their body language. Um, some of the best receivers have great body language. You can tell if they're breaking in or out. Um, you know, if you talk over a bunch of things, on seeing things on film, uh, Tyler and I, we talk a bunch and, and share a bunch of things that we see on film. And uh, it helps me understand his mindset when he's running a route versus a certain defender or a certain coverage. And uh, we talk about anticipating as quarterbacks, right? Getting the ball out fast. It's going to be important against a, a great pass rush, right? So getting the ball out fast and um, knowing the spots of where the guys are going to be at. Uh, timing and rhythm is critical in the passing game. And so getting the ball out um, on time uh, with precision and accuracy to the spots that they're going to be at, me trusting they'll be there, and then them trusting me to get the ball there, um, that, that's what all of that uh, comes down to. Do you realize you had a really good chemistry with DK and Tyler? Uh, I would say um, I think the the Jaguars game uh, where we started out just you know pretty pretty good. I uh, hit a bunch of completions in a row, and uh, you can kind of see those things kind of manifest itself. And so um, I think about all the you know conversations we had when I was the backup and trying to help those guys understand coverages and you know see different things. And then we get the chance to go out there and play and uh, you know had a really good game. And I, I kind of saw it, saw it back then. Seems like you're able to build quick chemistry with these receivers. You were, uh, you know, Jake Bobo and Matt Landers too this year. Just mm -hmm. guys coming in and able to hit the ground running. Looking back in retrospect, how much was a, how much of a blessing was it? Those practice uh, practices, the scout team quarterback, as you mentioned, being able to work with so many different receivers. How that's impacted your ability to hit it off with these receivers so far? Uh, I think you gotta, you know, really just give the credit to them. Uh, those, those two guys, uh, all the guys that have come in, the new guys, um, they've worked extremely hard to get on the same page with the quarterbacks. And, uh, you know, it's not just me alone. You know, it's Drew, it's Holton, and um, any other quarterback, right? Like, it's, it's important for all of us to see the same things, speak the same language. And, um, you know, that's why practice, we rep it so many times so that we can you know, go out there and execute. And so uh, it's a rep thing. It, it, you know, it takes a number of reps to get good at anything. And so we've just been repping our butts off and, and just getting a bunch of reps in after practice, uh, you know, watching film together. So when we hit the field, you know, we're not thinking about it. We're just reacting. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a testament to those guys' work, work ethic. And I think uh, that's something that we got to continue to build on. You know, the playmakers, Tyler Lockett's the only player uh, in the NFL with 18 team receptions in the past five seasons. What is that? Is it about his consistency? Uh, his consistency, man. Uh, every day he comes to work, 
Uh, he's focused. He's prepared. Um, obviously, he's a talented receiver, great route runner, has great hands, uh, clutch player. You know, when the ball's in his, in his vicinity, he goes and gets it. You know, not the tallest guy, but he plays big. And um, he loves ball, man. Uh, it's fun to be out there with him on, on, on game day, uh, just seeing the way that he's so passionate about the game. You know, for, for such a mild-mannered person, um, you know, when he puts on that uniform, he kind of changes to a, to a different person. And uh, you can see the consistency in that on game day. Captains this year. It's the first time since Pete's been here. It's been more than four. Does that speak to maybe just sort of the the way this locker room is that you don't have one dominant voice on offense, one on defense? That's a little more spread out. Yeah, I think so. I think we have a you know if I look at it from where from where I see it, we got a, a locker room full of alphas, and uh, anybody can be a leader on this team. Um, I don't see an ego with any of the guys on this team. You know, it's about team first. And it's about a we mentality. And I think that's why you see that. There, there could have been a number of guys who could have been voted captain. And, um, you know, it could have been 10. It could have been 15 because we have so many guys who are leaders uh, amongst us. And so when you put a bunch of alphas in one room, I think great things will happen. But um, having, you know, six captains is great, but anybody can step up and, and fill that role. Guys have made a lot of strides in some of the situational stuff offensively over the offseason. Yeah, I do. I think uh, that was a major emphasis for us, like third downs, you know, red zone, being better in those specific areas. Um, and so we got a bunch of reps uh, at that. You know, Pete put us in, you know, competition over and over, you know, third down competition, uh, red zone competition, a lot of back and forth between, you know, the offense and the defense. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be able to see throughout the season if we actually got better. But I think we did. In those situations on offense? Uh, the key is uh, getting, you know, making the plays. You know, it's going to be one on one somewhere. You know, someone's got to make a play on offense or defense. Uh, obviously, in the red zone, the field shortens. And so you got to be quicker with your decision making as a quarterback. Uh, you got to be accurate. You know, kind of got to know where to go with the ball and, and get it out on time and, and with precision. And then on third down, you know, whatever it takes to get the first down. Um, obviously picking up, you know, whatever blitz they have, whatever package they have. And then for me as a quarterback, reading the field and, and getting the ball to the right guys and then making plays. With Jackson's skill set, how much can he be a factor on third down? Uh, I think he'll be a tremendous factor. You know, I think uh, he's another guy who can win one-on-ones. Um, he's got a great skill set. Uh, you know, we got three dynamic receivers, a bunch of uh, dynamic, three dynamic tight ends, running backs who can, you know, run the ball and catch out of the backfield. So um, a quarterback, you know, quarterbacks who can, uh, who are mobile, who can throw and pass. And so we've got to use all of those things um, in order to, to help us succeed on third down. But um, Jackson brings so much to the table and uh, we just look forward to seeing what he does out there. You know, you've obviously put in a ton of work over the last few years, psychologically and confidence wise. How instrumental has Coach Carroll and the staff been in terms of uh, your progression and the confidence that you have coming to work every day? Yeah, uh, you know, Coach Carroll is a, a big part of that. Um, he uh, obviously, like I said, when I first got here, man, they took me in and embraced me, this entire organization, the city, uh, which is which I'm so grateful for. And that uplifted me, you know, that uplifted my spirits and, uh, you know, coming off of, you know, I was on two teams where it didn't work out. And so to come here and, you know, even though I was the backup for a few years, um, they allowed me to grow, to develop. Um, they're big on development here and uh, it's positive around here. And so that's something that I think all the guys like, you know, not just myself, but when you have that positivity, just, you know, exuding through the locker room and just, uh, especially from a head coach, right? Um, it just makes you want to go out there and play a lot harder. And uh, it also helps you with your own mentality. So, uh, you know, Coach Carroll's done a great job, and our staff does a great job at developing guys. Anything else? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you.